unwell the race of grace. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word, for this season, a timely word in our race of grace. Run well the race of grace. Thank you that your spirit has come to guide us into all truth. Open our eyes to see what you are showing, to hear what you are saying, and to run well this race of grace. In Jesus' name. Yes, the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, reading from the Amplified. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run your race that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Not every athlete who goes, he said, now every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a wreath that will soon wither. But we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Therefore I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an, an adversary. But like a boxer, I buffet my body, handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself shall become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. This will not be your portion, and it will not be my portion. Yes, God is enjoining us in this scripture to run well the race of grace, to run with a name, to run having a target, to run having a vision, and discipline ourselves so that we can run well this race and obtain the prize. Hallelujah. Yes, my friend, you under the sound of my voice, run well the race set before you. Run well your race. Refuse any hindrance. Run well the race of grace, focusing on the author and the finisher of your fate. Refuse distractions along the way. There will be distractions. Let no accolade of our accomplishments deceive or steal your steal or zeal. Let no jealousy or attacks or disdain trip you up. Yes, my friend, there will be attacks. The adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We get spirits in high places. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that. Also, don't allow accolades or accomplishments. Oftentimes, the good is often the enemy of the best. When you have done something good, there's a temptation to rest your laurels on what you have done or accomplished. There is more, my friend. God has more for you. You ain't seen nothing. It's just the beginning. What you've seen is just a scratching on the surface. I don't care what you may have accomplished. There is more that God wants to do through you and with you and in you. So, do not allow accolades or accomplishments to deceive you or to steal your steal. Or your zeal. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 2 tells us looking away from all that will distract to Jesus who is a leader and the source of our faith, the author and the finisher, the A to the, and the Z of our faith, giving the first incentive 
for our belief. And he's also the finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is our example. He went ahead of us. He showed us how to do it, how to run the race of grace. And so, my friend, set your face like a flint. See your Savior, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. See also the joy and the banquet set for you, waiting for you. After you've finished enduring your cross, after you've finished your race, there is a banquet waiting for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So regardless of your enemies, know that God has prepared a table for you, even in the presence of your, of your enemies. He has anointed your hair with oil, and your cup runs over. Hallelujah. Your cup overflows. That should be your assurance, regardless of the trials and tribulations you face. God is present, and that makes a great difference. Hallelujah. In Philippians 3, 12 to 14, Paul, the writer of 13 bestsellers, hear what he says. Now that I have now attained, he said, not that I have now attained this deal, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold of, to grasp and make my own, that for which Christ Jesus the Messiah has laid hold of me and made me his own. I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own, yet, but one thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. Yes, Saul in this scripture tells us that regardless of the atrocities he unleashed on the church killing people supervising others to kill others to kill people like Stephen Acts chapter 7 obtaining warrants to arrest and imprison Christians in spite of those, those atrocities he said I will forget forgetting those things which are behind he also forgot the accomplishments he made in, in Christ Jesus he said, I will press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling me. That should be your attitude, my friend. Never say I've arrived. Once you say you have arrived, guess what? You begin to sleep. You begin to backslide. You begin to retreat. And never advance. You begin to fall. Yes, Jeremiah was called of God, and he told God, I'm a child. What did God tell him? God told him, I have made you a bronze wall, an iron pillar, a fortified city. He said, don't be afraid of their faces. I am with you and in you and for you. That same word is for you. If he has said it to one, he has said it to all. If God be for you, who can be against you? They will try to resist you, but they will not overcome you. They will fight against you, but they will lose, stumble, and fall. Yes, in Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 17, I read, from the Amplified. But you, Jeremiah, get up your loins, arise and tell them all that I command you. Do not be the dismayed and break down the side of their faces, lest I confound you before them and permit you to be overcome. For I, behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and a bronze 
wars against the whole land, against the successive kings of Judah, against the princes, against the priests, and against the people of the land, giving you divine strength which no hostile power can overcome. And they shall fight against you, but they shall not finally prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Hallelujah. And so God lays the card bare to Jeremiah. I, am, I have called you. I have ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Go and speak my word. Be not afraid of their faces. Yes, some faces can be terrifying. Some of us are more fearfully and wonderfully made than others. Yes, people will frighten you. At times, just their words can cause you to sh panic. But God is telling Jeremiah as he's telling you and I, be not afraid. Get up your loins. Arise. Tell them what I have commanded you to tell them. Don't be dismayed and break down at the sight of their faces. Said, I have made you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, bronze walls against the whole land. Imagine those images. Hallelujah. It's to strengthen you and I, even today, in these end times. I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls. Glory to God. Yes, God did not mean words. They will fight against you. But they shall not prevail against you. Why? Because I am with you, says the Lord. With you to be aloof? No. With you to deliver you. Hallelujah. Oh, what a promise. Glory to God. So my friend, refuse to shudder. Refuse to tremble at their faces. Be bold and strong. He told Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of a good courage. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Yes, he told Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Hallelujah. So be not afraid. Yes. By the reason of this great multitude. Hallelujah. Yes, from verse, verse 15 he says, Go, he said, pay attention to me, everyone from Judah, everyone living in Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says to you. Don't be frightened or terrified by the large crowd. The battle isn't yours, it's God's. Hallelujah. But then he told them tomorrow, go into battle against them. They will come from the Z's Pass. You'll find them at the end of the valley in front of the Jeruel Desert. You won't fight this battle. Instead, take your position. Stand still and see the victory of the Lord for you. Hallelujah. Don't be frightened or terrified. Go out tomorrow to face them. The Lord is with you. Glory to God. Yes, Jehoshaphat, the man who pleased God, one of the few kings who did what was right in God's sight, was waylaid by enemy forces, allied forces. They came from every corner. The Ammonites, the Moabites, Meunites, they were like the sands of the sea. The king feared initially, but then God after he had come before God in fasting and prayer with his nation, God encourages him to go out tomorrow against them. But he's not, going, he's not going to fight, yet he needed to go out. And when God gives you an instruction like this, you better carry it out. Yes, for if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. And the day, next day, he went out with his people, appointed singers, 
and they began to sing. Yes, the choir was before the army, and they began to sing. And as they began to sing, glory to God, yes, God set an ambush against their enemies. Verse 22, and as they began, started to sing praises, the Lord set ambushes against the Ammonites, Moabites, and the people of Mount Seir, who had come into Judah. They were defeated. Glory be to God. They were walloped. Hallelujah. Yes. What, what more? <laughs> Verse 25 tells us, When Jehoshaphat and his troops came to, the, to take the loot, they found among them a, a lot of goods, clothes, valuables. They found more than they could carry. They spent three days collecting the loot. Glory be to God. That is what our God can do. Yes, for those who trust Him. God gave, him, gave them more than enough. They collected goodies, including silver and gold. Imagine going, those going to war, going with silver and gold and lots of goodies. God prearranged the blessing of His people as they were planning, aligning themselves against God's people. God was planning to bless His people super abundantly. Hallelujah! That is the God we serve. Hallelujah! The weapons of our warfare are not carnal; they are mighty to, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the revealed will of God. Stand to see. The salvation of your God. Yes, God will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Hallelujah. When you stand strong in the Lord and obey Him and do the ridiculous, He will bless you just as He blessed Judah and Jehoshaphat. Yes, He will completely. Yes, cause your singing, your praises, to decapitate and completely neutralize and discombobulate your adversary. Yes, let be your this be your confidence. Cast not away your confidence. Be bold and strong with a sure footed stability. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand in the evil day. Yes, put on the helmet of salvation. Yes, to cover your mind from every insinuation of the enemy. Put on the shoes of the gospel. Yes, ready to share the testimony that God has given you even through your tests. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. That they loved all their lives even unto death. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Yes, Put on the breastplate of right standing with God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, put on the belt of truth. Expose every lie of the enemy. Hallelujah, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Expose the lies of the enemy. The enemy is a father of lies. Hallelujah. Yes, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. And be on the offensive. Take the shield of faith with which to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Hallelujah. Pray with all kinds of prayer. Knowing that God will hear you. He shall call upon me. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. And show him my salvation. That's the word of God. In Psalm 90 when he tells us. Yeah, he who dwells. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely will save you from the foul last snare and from the deadly pestilence. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the destruction that wastes at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right, and the evil will not come near you. Only with your eyes will you see the punishment of the wicked. Hallelujah. Yes, when they come in one way, they will flee in seven ways. Why? Because the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom should you fear? The Lord is the stronghold of your life. Of whom should you be afraid? Hallelujah. Stand still, say the Lord. Run well, the race of grace. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare are not cannot be. They are mighty to God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. 
Hallelujah. Yes, refute every argument and theories and reasonings. Yes, of the world. Every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the word of God, pull it down. Hallelujah. And lead every thought and purpose away, captive into the obedience of Christ. Yes, that's God's instruction for you and I. Pull them down. Every reasoning, every theory that negates the word of God, pull it down. Hallelujah. Whatever people are saying that is not in line with God's word, God's word, pull it down. Whatever your mind is telling you that is against God's word, pull it down. Hallelujah. Whatever your body is telling you that is against the word of God, pull it down. Tell your body, in this house, my spirit rules. Yes, and my spirit is led by the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Yes, you are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Whoever is born of God overcome this world, and this is a victory overcome this world, even your faith. Hallelujah. Yes, partner with the Holy Spirit. He is your standby. He is your intercessor. Yes, he is your strengthener. He has come to guide you. Yes, into victory land. Yes, run well the race of grace, my friend. Consistently and continually seek God's face. Let the Holy Spirit guide you as to how to train for the race of grace. As to, yes, what to eat, what not to eat. Yes, He will let you know. You need to know that the race you're on is not a hundred meters dash, but a divine marathon. Yes, it's, it's long and hard. Yes, but God makes a difference. Hallelujah. You're not alone. His angels are on assignment on your behalf. Hallelujah. You just need to be regimented. Training properly. Exercising properly. Having strict diet. And mental agility. Moment by moment. Renew your mind with the word of God. To know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, superabundantly, saturating you. Lighting your path, carrying you, building you up, speaking to you as the Holy Spirit brings the word of God alive. As the word for the moment, the rhema word. And use it and fight the good fight of faith. Yes, his word says, and but when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the truth given spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole and full truth. For he will not speak of his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come, that will happen in the future, and how to tackle them. Hallelujah. Yes, he gives, gives us a head start. So my friend, Yes, be led of the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He guides the steps of his own. He guides them into all truth. He guides them to green pastures. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. For he delights in him. The part of the just shines ever brighter. Under a perfect day. Under the full light of day. Verse 4.18 you will hear a word saying to you, this is the way, walk you in it. He will guide you like he did the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 14. Yes, they came face to face with the Red Sea. They looked back and they saw the Egyptians coming. In all their might. And they became afraid. Yet God was guiding them. He knew what he was doing. And they became, they wanted to eat Moses alive. And Moses cried to God, and God told him, why are you crying to me? Use what you have in, in, in your hands. 
Moses said, I have a rod. Yes, use it. And the revelation we got, get from there is that, yes, whatever situation you face, there is something you have. There is something in you that you can use. Yes, you can pray to God, Lord, show, show it to me. And God will show it to you because He's a faithful God. And what you have in you, you can use to part that red sea that stands before you. What you have in your hands, what you have in your in your house, that man with a pot of oil had something, and that was enough to save her and her son. What do you have? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He guided Abraham's servant to where he should find a wife for Isaac. He's still the same. He will guide you. He will guide you if you seek his face. He will guide you if you trust him. The disciples prayed and fasted in Acts chapter 13. Verse 2 and God appeared to them by the Holy Spirit, spoke to them, directed them as to what to do. Said, pray for me, Saul and Barnabas, for the work I have preordained for them to do. He guided Cornelius who was seeking God. He guided him to Peter. He guided Peter to the house of Colinius. And there, as Peter began to preach, the Holy Ghost fell. And the whole house became baptized, came to know Christ, became baptized. God guides. Hallelujah. He guided Philip to Ethiopian eunuch. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. The eunuch was searching. God took Philip out of a revival and took him to a desert. God guides. His ways are not ways. His ways may look ridiculous, but they lead to the miraculous. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to run your race well and win well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the first Timothy one eighteen, Paul wrote to Timothy, I charge and admonish you and commit in trust to you. Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophetic intimidations, intimations which I formerly received concerning you, so that inspired and aided by them, you may wage the good warfare. Hallelujah. God wants to wage, wants us to wage a good warfare with the prophetic word He has given to us from time to time. The Rhema word is given you, either in your closet or during a meeting. When the man of God pronounces a rhema word for you, take that word, pray it back to God. Take that word and beat the enemy on his head. Hallelujah. Say to the enemy, it is written, it is written, just like Jesus did when he was tempted in the desert. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou serve. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou serve. Hallelujah. Run well the race of grace. Knowing when to retreat in prayer and fasting. And to advance. Yes, when you retreat, you retreat to advance. Moses did and did great exploits. Jo Joshua did. And God opened his eyes to see why Israel was defeated by Ai, a small nation. Jesus did. And was able to defeat the devil completely. And accomplish his assignment. Nehemiah did. And not only obtained favor with the king. But he went on to start and finish. Building the wall of Jerusalem. Finish with finesse like Paul. It's good to start. But more important to finish and finish well. Like Usain Bolt will do. On a track and field event. And break records. My friend. You too can. You too can finish your race and finish well. See the saints of old gone ahead of you. Yes, beckoning on you, cheering you on. Come on, you can make it. You've got what it takes. You've come this far. You cannot quit now. Yes, you can do it. The Holy Spirit is in you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. 
You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Word of God. The blood of Jesus speaks for you. It speaks better things than the blood of bulls and goats. You can make it. You have all you need. Angels are on assignment for you. Finish like Solomon finished the build, building the, 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 the temple. Finish like Nehemiah finished rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Finish like Esther brought Haman to justice and cut down the sword of Damocles. That doom hanging over the heads of her people. Finish like Jesus did and said, it is finished. It is done. Hallelujah. Like Paul, finish and be able to say, I am now ready to be offered as a libation. I am ready to depart and join a cloud of witnesses. I am ready to meet my maker. I have finished my race of grace. I have finished my course. I have completed my assignment. Hence for this laid uh, for me a crown of righteousness. Where the, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give not only unto me, but unto all those awaiting his appearing. Glory to God. My friend, under the sound of my voice, finish well your race. You can do it. God is for you. God is in you. Yes, nothing shall separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. All things are working together for your good because you love God and you are called according to purpose. Therefore shall tribulation separate you? No. Shall famine separate you? No. Shall distress separate you? No. Shall nakedness separate you? No. Shall peril or sorrow separate you? No. Nay, you are more than a conqueror. Yes, you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers impending, or threatening, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Finish well the race of grace, and give glory to your God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. For those under the sound of my voice, ah, my course especially those undergoing fiery trials, like Daniel underwent, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like Stephen of old who was stoned to death. Father, I pray that none of them will crumble under the pressure in the name of Jesus, that they will stand strong like Jeremiah in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them, Lord, with might in the inner being. Yes, to press on for the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Yes, help them, remind them of the word that you gave them, the rhema word that you gave them, yes, in times past, so that they can use that word to wage a good warfare and win the battle. Yes, that they will know that they know that the war has been won by Jesus Christ. Yes, and so we can win our individual battles in the name of Jesus. More than win, run well the race of grace, child of God. God has gone, gone ahead of you to make every crooked place straight. Yes, when you go through the water, it shall not overflow you. You will not drown. When you go through the fire, the flame will not kindle upon you. Ah, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that fourth man will be there. Jesus Christ will be there. And hard pressed on every side, you will not be crushed. Perplexed, you need not be in despair. Persecuted, know that you are not abandoned. You are not abandoned. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you until the end of the age. And when you are struck down, know that you are not struck out. Know that you are still in the race of grace. Press on, get up and go and press on and finish. Yes, see the cloud of witnesses in heaven. Yes, cheering you on, child of God. Stand still and see the salvation of your God. Yes, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. They will drown in that Red Sea. In the name of Jesus. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. All things are possible to those who believe, to those who trust in the Most High God, to those who acknowledge that He has all power. He is sovereign. He decrees and He stands, commands and He comes into being. He watches over His word to perform it. The word that has proceeded out of His mouth will not return to Him empty and accomplish that which He pleases. Yes, He is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of Man that He should repent. Yes, I believe. I believe and I will see I believe yes I believe and I will receive I believe yes I believe and so I speak my confession will bring a manifestation in Jesus' name. All things are possible to those who believe. I have prayed a word and I will receive. The word of God is so sure, so told in heaven. It will accomplish that which is a sin. I believe, yes, I believe. And so, and so I speak, I believe. Yes, I believe and I will receive. I believe, yes, I believe. And so I speak. My confession will bring a manifestation in Jesus' name. If God says yes, somebody tell me. Who can say no? By two unchangeable things. It is impossible for God to lie. His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. We're gone out from his mouth when I return to him empty. I believe, yes, I believe, and so I speak. I believe, yes, I believe, and I will receive. I believe, yes, I believe, and so I speak. My confession will break a manifestation. My confession will bring a manifestation. All things are born. My confession will bring a manifestation. All things are born. My confession will bring a manifestation. 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 Those who believe.